Okay. Okay, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Zhao. I'm a PhD student from Carleton University. Uh, you guys can hear me? Okay, I'm from Canada. And I'm going to talk about our research. Name is kind of long. It's uh, keeping users engaged through feature updates, which is a uh, long term study of using wearable based extra games. Well, people are supposed to be lazy, I guess. So that's why many of us are trying really hard to like make this whole exercise type of thing with more fun, interesting, and more engaging. We have a lot of uh, exercise applications uh, with some gamified elements in it. We have scores, leaderboards, achievement, all of those. And also have some um, Kinect and uh, Wii games at home so that it, it try to like try to encourage us to exercise a little bit more at home. And also have some very famous uh, zombies run like Pokemon Go game. That actually, uh, they are actually, actually try to just take us outside for a walk or for a run. And on the other hand, uh, the wearable technologies is also a very hot topic recent years. We have people uh, fully equipped with many sensors. Uh, and of course, uh, the most popular common use of them are still those uh, wristbands and smartwatches. They are the activity trackers. And um, there are many of them off the shelf and they are not expensive at all. And some of them provide APIs for third party developers. So that, that's why we start to think, yeah, we want to make something based on that. So this, this work I'm presenting now is kind of based on one of our previous research in which uh, we proposed that off-the-shelf wearable devices have considerable potential to be utilized in gamification of exercise and fitness. Well, in that study, uh, we conducted a short-term study and uh, we, uh, we have designed and implemented a system, uh, Xor game system, and we invited participants uh, to come to our lab, try the system with different combinations of wearable sensors and uh, different type of activities. And uh, this work was published last year. And uh, from that, we, we, we found that based on existing technology and the user needs, this idea of employing uh, wearable activity trackers for gamification of exercise and fitness, well, this idea could be feasible, motivating, and engaging. So now uh, we are trying to look at some more detail uh, related to this idea. So for this study, the qu uh, research question is whether game features in their release system can actually improve engagement over time. And we extend the uh, original study to a long-term one, which is not that long, but it's longer than that. It's 70 days. And we try to uh, verify the hypothesis that uh, the gradually releasing of the game features will improve user retention over a longer period. In this case, it's 70 days. And uh, this is the basically how the application looks like. And we used it both in our previous and this study. Uh, it is an iOS app that it, it uses wearables as input to control the game. Actually, it, it kind of tracks your real-time speed if you're running and uh, your real-time exercise uh, well, intensity. And uh, we try to use that sort of values to uh, to, to input to the game and try to control the game. Um, it, it supports multiple devices. In this case, we have Apple Watch, and there's a sensor tag from Texas Instrument, and we also have a thigh band. And it can work with different type of exercises. We tried running, walking, and um, rope skipping in cycling thing. And uh, yeah, we are focusing on real-time responses. And in this study, we have added some new features to our original game. Uh, we have added some customization of colors, background, and the character colors. And uh, there are some more real-time game features uh, to different levels added. And we also include some social features, which includes leaderboards and achievement and challenge box. And the, 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 the picture on the left shows that uh, in this study, the device we chose was the TI sensor tag. Reason, because in our short-term study, we found this one to be the most accurate one. Uh, and uh, 
it, it does really good in the real-time communication thing uh, with the, the phone. And it is also the cheapest thing, so we can, we can buy more for our participants. And uh, in this study, we have in total 30 participants join our study, and we evenly divided them to three groups. The basic group only received only very basic features of the game. They have only single level and single player. And for the full group, they have full features of the game, uh, including those things I just talked about. And for the updating group, they start with the same thing as the basic group received but they have some other features gradually added in. So we, we unlock something new to them every 10 days. So the table on the right side actually shows our uh, updating schedule. Uh, here's a limitation because we kind, kind of want to also want to look at different features, but we didn't do a cross validation here because uh, the time and the number of users are kind of limited in this study. So. Uh, for the updating group, all the 10 people in that group actually received uh, the updates in this same order. But we'll definitely do something else later. And for data collection, uh, we have both pre and post study questionnaire. And for in the pre study one, we ask about some demographic uh, information. And uh, in the post study questionnaire, we have some general game experience questions and we have some open-ended questions. And we also include IMI, the Intrinsic Motivation Inventory, uh, to assess participants' subjective experience related to the game experience. We chose IMI because it is one of the most popular used uh, skills for evaluating motivation-related things. And um, yeah, we also have some in-game data collection. We use Google Analytics. Uh, actually, we're, we were monitoring all the detailed user behavior, include every button they clicked and every screen they viewed and all the duration time of the uh, exercise session. Uh, here are the results. We have in total 30 participants and 19 of them were males and we have 11 females and the average age was around 25. Uh, they, are, uh, they spend an average 3.8 hours a week on exercise, and uh, they spend 6.3 <coughs> hours per week on playing computer and console games, and uh, the time they spend uh, with mo mobile games was 4.7 hours a week. And uh, because we provide different choices for the exercise types for them, and uh, during the 70 days, uh, and it's not that clear, sorry about the words, it's too small, but most of people chose running, uh, it's around 70% of them, and uh, some of them chose cycling, but only few of them uh, actually tried rope skipping. And uh, after each completed session they have played, our game, uh, there's a pop-up question ask, uh, ask about their satisfaction toward this past session. And uh, we found most people were uh, encouraged or somehow encouraged by our system. Uh, and we found the results in the update, updating on the full group to be a little bit better than the basic group. And uh, these are from our post-study questionnaire, and we start by asking them two general questions about their motivation, their satisfaction, and their pro preference in using our system compared to just regular exercise. Uh, all these questions are in seven Likert scale, and we did one way between groups ANOVA, uh, followed by a post-hoc analysis for all these questions, and we found significance between the basic group and the, the up updating group, and the, also between the full and the updating group uh, in motivation and in satisfaction, but there's no si significance found in preference. And we also asked them, them about the importance level of these different features. Uh, we didn't find any significance here, but we can see uh, the, the features related to social factors are yeah, it looks like they, it plays a more impo important role slightly here. So we're, there, there's no significance found here, but we'll definitely try to design another study and try to figure it out. And these are the results from the IMI subscales. They are basically just look like the same as those three general questions. We found significance 
between basic and full group and between basic and updating group in those subscales of uh, interest and enjoyment, perceived competence, effort and importance, and the value and usefulness, but there's no significance in the pressure and tension subscale. Uh, and this one shows the result of our daily active users. We can see well, there, are, there are just decent trends for all three, all, uh, all three groups, but the blue one is the, ba it's a, yeah, it's a basic group and it's just dropped down very fast. And the green one is the full group that it kind of waves, it's because the weekends or if there's a holiday, so that they have some, they can actually spend more time on exercising. And uh, yeah, the most obvious one is the red line. It's the updating group. It's going up uh, every time there's a release of a new feature. And it, after that, it just drops down. But in the end, it, is, it stays as the highest active users. And this one shows the accumulated graph of the active users so that we can see for the updating group, we have the most uh, active users. Uh, but then we thought that maybe it is not enough or it is not that accurate enough to just look at active users because we send notification to them and let them know that, okay, come, come back and we have some new features unlocked for you. So probably they just come back and check for the updates without actually exercise. So we also take a look at the game sessions they have actually played. Uh, we have uh, the, those dotted lines are the, the, the sessions they actually started, and those solid lines are the sessions they have actually completed. This is not that clear, but the twin, the, the, the shape just look like the active users. And this is the accumulated completed sessions graph and it's basically the same as the active users. So the, the, the updating group is still the highest. So that we can, we can say they're not just coming back to check for the updates, but they actually uh, exercise more. And this is just for interest. Uh, we were looking at at what time of the day people exercise a little bit more. Uh, seems that they prefer morning from 9 to 11 and the uh, afternoon between four and six, something like this. And here's our conclusion. Uh, as expected, the engagement and gameplay features are highly linked in extra games, and the number of game features could have impacts on user motivation towards the gamified exercise system. And the consistent updates uh, not only resulted in an increased usage of the app itself, but also had positive impacts on the actual amount of workout activity. Uh, so that we have some design recommendations for uh, game designers that probably the gradually updating is a good idea, uh, even if you have everything ready at the first time, but just do not give them at the same time. <laughs> yeah. The gradually updating of the features, it doesn't have any negative impacts on the user's motivation, but it actually let the users to like play this game a little bit longer. Uh, and for the future work, uh, yeah, as those speakers just talked about, player modeling different types of uh, players is a really important thing because uh, people are so different. In when, when conducting this study, we found that. People are different, they, have, they like different type of games and they like different type of features. So that's absolutely what we want to look at. We, we will uh, providing them each individual uh, user with a unique game experience that's important. And what I am doing right now, it's a gamified fitness advisor and a recommendation system. It's a 24 seven tracking system that actually we do uh, machine learning and ac activity recognitions. And uh, we're trying to provide users with some useful recommendations such as at what time of the day and at what location, which suggests you to do some exercise and at a certain intensity. And all these are also in a gamified way. And outdoor activities, yeah. Because this study we, we just did is limited indoor because we have to put some screen, put something in front of the user. Uh, so it's not uh, safe outside. 
So, uh, but we conducted that study in winter, and I'm from Canada, so that's gonna be good. Stay indoor, but yeah, we'll definitely do something that will support outdoor activities later. And that's it, thank you very much. Okay, I guess it's dinner time. No more questions. Hi, I won't make it move. Daniel Johnson. From <laughs> Thanks for that. That's really useful for some work we're doing, and it may be something you can't answer. But can I you can't speak, speak a little louder. Sure. No. Can you? Thank you. Uh, I'll just <laughs> Thank you. I'm not. Thanks, that's really useful for us. Can you, it may not be something you can answer based on this study, but can you speculate on whether it's getting a notification that the app has been updated, yeah. whether it's what is in the update, um, or whether it's there, just uh, that it was updated that's beneficial? It's an iOS app, so there's push notification, such as all those notifications you just got. At the beginning of the day, you got an app, uh, a notification told you that there's something new. So come back and check for updates. So you click on that and you open the app. So without that, probably. And, and if you open the app, we consider you are active this day. So probably it's not that accurate to just look at the active users. So we also look at the sessions. Thing. Right. I guess I'm wondering though if you what, if you have any ideas about whether what motivates the user uh -huh. is just that they're reminded the app exists because there's been an update, uh -huh. or it's what you put in the update that made the big difference. Do you know? Is there any way to tell from this study? Uh, I don't think. I don't think so. For cool. now, I don't think so, but I'll definitely consider it. Well, later. we'll work on it too, and we'll let you know what we work out. <laughs> yeah, it's... Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lina Mamakina, <laughs> Columbia University. Um, so, one thing I'm wondering, and this makes less problem, less important than a research, controlled research study, mm -hmm. but if this was a real-world app, there is a trade-off between the initial attractiveness and how much you want to wow people from the beginning so that they <laughs> pass the download and first use phase uh -huh. and how much you can then engage them later on. Uh -huh. Can you speak to how you see this trade-off, how much to put up front to well, get them started and how much then to release later? Well, this study is conducted in our university, so we just post some posters and ask them to come and I'll, I'll just help them install the application. So I don't think it is a problem here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we definitely got something, I mean the wow things. We got some really good animations at the beginning to make them feel this might be attractive. And uh, yeah, and I guess with the gradually updating, they found something new every 10 days. So that's going to be how I deal with this problem. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, I was wondering if, since you had demographic data, did you mm -hmm. look at the demographic between the groups? Yeah. So we can just, this one? Uh, no, the demographic data, so. Uh, Demographic data? Yeah, so like um, male, female, oh, okay. like between uh, the groups themselves. Sorry, I didn't themselves. hear it clearly about yeah. that. Uh, yeah, they're just evenly divided. We just randomly put them into three groups. There's no difference, and I didn't see any difference there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.